Hello and a very warm welcome. In today's video, we're going to talk about mistreated men in Formula 1. Now, obviously, I've got a couple. People are going to be screaming, Oh, you missed this one. You missed this one. Comment down below any you feel I've missed. But, obviously, I can't cover everyone. We'd be here all day. So, I've got quite a couple. Well, we've got a few. So, let's start. These are drivers that have been mistreated in Formula 1, I feel. We're going to start with Nico Hülkenberg. Yeah, he had a good 10 years in the sport. Started with Williams, Force India. Uh, yeah, uh, Sauber won he as well. Uh, Renault, then Racing Point. And now he's uh, was at Aston Martin. Yeah. A very good driver, Nico Hülkenberg. Got a pole in a Williams. Uh, ask anyone in the paddock. They will tell you that Nico Hülkenberg should be on the grid. Yeah, he's highly rated by his peers. And for Hülkenberg not to be on the grid is disgraceful. I mean, he's won Le Mans. Um, yeah, madness. How Nico Hülkenberg never ended up with a Ferrari drive or a top drive, I'll never know. So, yeah, he's number one. When you think of someone being mistreated, I would say Hülkenberg's right up there. Number two, we'll jump into Oscar Piastri. F3, F2 champion. And what's his reward for winning them titles back-to-back? -back? Sit on the sidelines for a year. I mean, I always say it. The F2 champion should be on the grid. Otherwise, it's a bad look for the lower categories. The champion has to be on the grid, and he's not. He will be a reserve driver in 22. Should be on the grid, will have to wait till 2023. I mean, he's done everything he needs to do, yet he sat on the sidelines. Shocking. Number three, we're going to go with Stoffel Van Dorn. Yeah, I feel a bit sorry for Van Dorn. I mean, he literally came into Formula 1. At McLaren's worst time. Like. Of course he got the top drive with McLaren. GP2 champion. Got the drive with McLaren. And then. He literally came to McLaren. At their worst possible moment. So. He didn't really get a chance in Formula 1. For me. He did amazing. As he filled in for Fernando Alonso. When he got that horrible accident at Australia. Van Dorn came in. Scored points. But, yeah, Honda engine, reliability issues. And now Van Dorn's in Formula E. Yeah, yeah. Number four, Nick De Vries. Um, yeah, Nick De Vries never got a chance in Formula 1. This is a guy who beat Nicholas Latifi, and he never got a chance in Formula 1. And as Stoffel Van Dorn, he's now in Formula E. Also tried his hand at World Endurance. Yeah, another guy who won the F2 Championship but didn't get a drive. Um, yeah, he was actually linked with uh, an Alfa Romeo seat and a Williams seat for 22, but that hasn't materialised. Nick De Vries won the Formula E Championship, didn't he, last year? I mean, my F1 knowledge is pretty good, but my Formula E knowledge, I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, I don't watch Formula E. It's abysmal. Uh, what number are we on now? Number five. Number five, Callum Eilat. Another guy who has completely missed his chance in Formula 1. Callum Eilat, a guy who finished ahead in Nikita Mazepin and Yuki Tsunoda, and he still didn't get a F1 drive. They got the F1 drive instead. Callum Eilat. Beat Sonoda, beat Mazepin, never got on the, never got a chance in F1. Callum Eilat will go to IndyCar this season, and his chance in F1 has gone. Number six, Antonio Giovinazzi. Now this one's a bit hit and miss because Giovinazzi has had opportunities, but very harsh that he got dropped last season, in my opinion. Giovinazzi was doing very well in qualifying, needed to improve in the races, 
But yeah, he outqualified a world champion. And for him to get dropped was quite poor. Yeah, I saw improvement in Antonio. And yeah, another guy who's gone to Formula E. And this is why I call Formula E the Formula 1 rejects club. Because it's full of F1 rejects who couldn't make it at the top level. Uh, you only have to look. De Vries couldn't make it. Wrongly, I have to say, but all these guys. Van Dorn, he's in Formula E. Uh, De Vries is in Formula E. Um, yeah, Giovinazzi's in Formula E. So it's poor. I mean, you want to be in Formula 1. You don't want to be in the bloody... It's like... it's Formula 1's like the Premier League and Formula E's like the bloody Scottish League. It's shocking. And number 7, and probably the last one, Danny Kvyat. Now, Danny Kvyat has been mistreated. This guy's been dropped more times than a tennis ball. I mean, how many times has he been dropped? He starts at Toro Rosso. He got the he actually got the promotion to Red Bull. His first season, he actually did wonders. Pretty sure he beat Daniel Ricciardo. And then 2016, he had the famous... Uh, you came like a torpedo. I was racing. Yeah, but racing and... Uh, we're on the podium, so what are you complaining about? Um, and then we had... Uh, the famous one at Russia. Oh, I'm out. Somebody hit me in the fucking rear, turn two, and then again in turn three. Fuck's sake, what are we doing here? Yes, of course, everyone will attack me, but uh, typical Russian media talking fucking bullshit. Uh, then he got put back to Toro Rosso. Then he got dropped. Then he came back, dropped. Uh, it's a mess for Danny Kvyat. Yeah. Comment down below, have I missed anyone obvious? Now, of course, I can't cover everyone. There's probably drivers back in the 90s who was mistreated. Drivers in the 2000s that was mistreated. But I'm doing, like, now, present. And these are the seven men that come straight to mind. we got Oscar Piastri. we got Hulkenberg, Van Dorn, De Vries, Kvyat, Callum Eilat, and Antonio Giovinazzi. Comment down below your thoughts, if anyone stands out for you um yeah um i was just thinking uh jolian palmer uh, he didn't really cover himself in glory did he um in the renault mistreated men um don't know no one really st i can't really think <laughs> No one's standing out. You go back um, in time. Danny Kvyat, though, he's been dropped so many times. I think I think the biggest one out of this mistreated men is Nico Hulkenberg. Everyone knows how good Nico Hulkenberg is, and he's not on the grid. This is a guy who's had a career over 10 years. I mean, real quality. Um, yeah. Comment down below your thoughts if I've missed anyone. I thought this was a fantastic video idea, actually. Um, I'm really happy at the minute. The channel's going well. A lot of motivation. And look at the thumbnails. I've plucked my ideas up. They're now like, um, what do you call it? Like, look. They're like, um, what's the word? Transparent. Yes, so that's, I feel like that's a good move. Um, yeah. Comment down below. Thanks for watching. Adios. Like, subscribe, and yes, follow me on Twitter. Adios.